lawmakers are concerned about the fact that Trump's uh, budget proposal would cut a lot of the programs that they rely on and depend on. And if they're upset about these cuts, would they vote differently in upcoming elections? Now, this is an insanely, insanely interesting uh, case study. And of course, it's based mostly on anecdotal evidence. But I think that it's important to kind of look at different patterns and see how voters feel about uh, things that are working against their best interests, right? Now, here's an important thing to keep in mind before we continue on with this story. So while conservatives often uh, decry government spending in general, Red states generally receive more in federal government benefits than blue states do, and thus are often at greater risk from someone like Trump. Right off the bat, Anna comes out swinging. She pulls a straight up Hail Mary. Of course, it might seem counterproductive if you love sucking at the tea of the government to vote for someone who is talking about cutting government spending. First off, let me just critique the article before I respond to the claim that red states receive more federal funding than they give. Nowhere in the article does it specify what programs or where this federal money is going, which is very important. The New York Times article does, however, link where they are getting the information from. So let's go over it, shall we? So yes, at first glance, it's clear that red states are more dependent on federal funding. However, when you look at the top five least dependent by residents, five out of the top 10 are red states. That's important to know. I'm not done yet. Trust me, it gets better. Using results from the 2012 presidential election, Wallet Hub ranked each state from 1 to 50, with 1 being the least dependent state and 50 being the most dependent state. Now, you might be thinking, what's wrong with that? What's the problem? It makes sense. Sure it does. If you think the presidential election is the ultimate determining factor of what makes a state a blue state or a red state. First off, states that are either haves give more to the federal government than they receive or have nots get more from the federal government than they give do not just arise overnight. State finances take decades to develop as either haves or have nots. So looking at only a single election is meaningless. Rather, we need to look at how a state has voted over several decades to obtain any relevant insights. I know, I know. You're reaching the bottom of the barrel trying to find anything so you can justify Republican spending or voting for Donald Trump. Both are wrong as I hold no allegiance to the Republican Party or red states. I am from a blue state and the only Republicans I actually really admire are Rand Paul, Thomas Massey, Justin Amash, Ron Paul, Ted Cruz, and maybe a little bit of Marco Rubio and Austin Peterson if he decides to run. So there's that. Just hear me out. Furthermore, it's equally nonsensical to just consider how a state votes for the president. We also need to look at how each state votes for its senators, representatives, and even governors. Given how Congress has the power of the purse, this is core to assessing how a state's welfare status relates to its Democrat versus Republican voting record. And this is where the red state welfare hypothesis disintegrates. The following table shows the percentage of person years between 1980 and 2013, for which each of the top and bottom welfare states voted Democrat at the presidential and congressional level. Clearly, the so-called red states are far more likely overall to vote for a Republican presidential candidate than his Democratic counterpart when compared to the supposed blue states. But look at New Mexico, West Virginia, New Hampshire, Nevada, and Colorado. New Mexico, Virginia, and New Hampshire have been evenly split on presidential candidates since 1980. Nevada and Colorado voted for both Bush 43 wins and Colorado even went Republican during the 1996 Clinton landslide. At the senatorial level, how can you call North Dakota, Louisiana, and West Virginia red states when their voting record is overwhelmingly Democrat over the past three decades? Even South Dakota and New Mexico failed the red state test. West Virginia hasn't had a Republican senator since before 1960. On the other side of the aisle, New Hampshire, supposedly a blue state, has only elected a single Democratic senator, the currently serving Jean Shaheen, since 19. 
1980. Minnesota and Colorado also failed the blue state designation based on who they have put in the Senate over this time frame. In the House of Representatives, it is absurd to characterize Mississippi, West Virginia, North Dakota, and South Dakota as red states when they have elected more Democrats than Republicans since 1980. North Dakota and West Virginia's choices for the House of Representatives are dominantly blue. Similarly, New Hampshire and Delaware have elected predominantly Republicans in the House, and somehow they are blue states. Colorado and Nevada also don't pass the blue state test. And as recently as the 111th Congress, five of Colorado's seven representatives were Republican. Be careful when someone tries to spew this nonsense at you. It's propaganda and it's not accurate.